go live on YouTube as well. I see people joining in. Please let us know how the audio is. Okay, I think we're live on YouTube as well. All right, guys. Um, hi, everyone. I see people in the live chat. I see Christy, uh, Raza, Mars, Beige, um, Ali. Um, can you say something just so people could test the audio? Yes. Hi, everybody. So happy that Christy's here and Beach. Thank Yay. you. And Mars. And Jack. Oh, Jack is here as well. Awesome. By the way, we had our first um, Vancouver meetup uh, yesterday, and Jack was there. Finally saw him in person. That was really fun. Um, but yeah, by the way, for people that don't know, our consulates um, are basically our local groups. We have one in m many cities. If you go to our website, you will be able to find a local consulate in your own city so that you could. And if you don't find the consulate for your city, please email us so you could start one. Uh, but we, we have these consulates so you could meet up with other atheists in um, closer to you. So they, this helps uh, for activism, for just atheists to meet each other. And also to it really helps for atheists that feel like they're alone or they're isolated or they're missing that sense of community. So even if you don't feel that, um, try to attend these events for the sake of the other people that might need a community to belong to. But anyways... It was really fun, by the way. We, I got to meet a lot of... We had a lot of fun conversations. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be discussing the latest news on atheism, religion, secularism, anything that you guys showed some interest in uh, on Atheist Republic. Sometimes they, and they might not be about atheism or religion, but if you guys are interested in it, we'll talk about it. Most of them are atheism and religion. So we have 10 news to cover. Uh, what is... Ali, did you want to say anything before we start? Uh, no, let's jump right in. It's a good story. Out of Missouri, USA, church people are shitty. Mega church pastor gives up on Christianity. Dave Gass, a Missouri megachurch pastor, stepped down from his position after 40 years and renounced his Christian faith, reported the Christian Post. He tweeted, after 40 years of being a devout follower, 20 of those being an evangelical past, uh, pastor, I am walking away from faith. Even though this has been a massive bomb drop in my life, it has been decades in the making. He then added that the church was a place for abuse for him and that church people are shitty people. <laughs> okay wait i don't know if we go that far like all of them uh you know i think that when people are emotional and i'm sure this is a very big emotional step for dave gas um you, you tend to generalize a bit more than maybe you should i think that you know I, I look back in my time during the church and i agree that a lot of people were bad people um at the church there are a lot of perverts a lot of weirdos that i have met uh during my lifetime of being a, a devout christian follower um but there are also some pretty good people so you know right and i also like is that his reason for losing faith because that's not a very legit reason it's not yeah. <laughs> well you know what you know what uh something you told me a long time ago actually right. was that it doesn't matter what the reason is right well um <laughs> no it doesn't it does it matters in this okay so it matters and it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter in the sense that i think every all atheists deserves to be deserve to be protected against discrimination against atheists even if they're reasoning for leaving religion was not a very good one right it doesn't matter even even dumb atheists deserve protection against discrimination against atheists right yeah but it does matter in a sense that we we do want to promote you know logical way of thinking what i say to people that you know so for example the reason why i think this is not logical oh we got a super chat hey thank you Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, uh, RPG gamer guy, two dollars. He says because you guys deserve. It. He or she says because you guys deserve. It. Thank you. You're very much. awesome. Thank, thank you. you. But anyways, I was saying that, like for example, uh, if if you, what is this? Oh yeah. So if people say that they left religion because they didn't like religious people, well, religion could be true even if every single religious person is an asshole, right? Um, just, just the same way around. Like if you show them, if even, so a lot of people say, oh, atheists are assholes, right? For example, atheists are assholes, right? Some people, uh, their response is that, and that's why I don't like atheism. 
Um, some people respond, well, that's not true. Atheists are not assholes. We have our fair share of assholes and we have a lot of good people, right? But my response to that is like, even if 100 of per atheists, 100% of atheists were assholes, that doesn't really prove God. So even if every single atheist that you met was an asshole, that is not an argument against atheism. Atheism could be still be the logical position. But that to be consistent, that's also true with religion. Even if every single Christian you ever met was an asshole, that's not an argument against Christianity. Christianity is wrong because it's nonsense. It doesn't have any evidence. It doesn't have any proof for its claims. The fact that Christians are good people or bad people is irrelevant to the claim. So, I, so if somebody leaves religion because like a lot of Muslims, some Muslims leave Islam because they say, well, I looked into it. It didn't make any sense. Okay, that's a valid reason. But a lot of Muslims I've met that left Islam because they were tired of Muslims. They're like, I don't like Muslims. I met a lot of Muslims. They're, I don't like my experience with them. And that's why I left Islam. I mean, you could do that, but that's not a very, that's not an well, argument against does, Islam. As Beach pointed out, he does go on to many other reasons. Uh, oh. He even goes back to the, back to when he was in eighth grade and reading about Greek mythology oh. um, and how oh, things mind. started dawning on him then, but then how his marriage uh, wasn't anything that it was, he was promised it would be. And, you know, if, if you read the Bible, if you read about the relationship between a married woman and a man, I mean, it is supposed to be something pretty darn spectacular, but he went through a lot of uh, abuse in his marriage as well. Um, and then he says, uh, at the, the full quote is, I spent my entire life serving, loving, and trying to help people in my congregations. And the lies, betrayal, and slander I've received at the hands of church people left wounds that may never heal. So I think, I think the fact that, um, you know, those people slandered him and, and lied to him and, and weren't what he thought church people should be. I think that he's just angry about that right. really more than, you know, why okay. he stopped. Okay, eating. never mind. Then I'll take everything I said back. But I want to do, I did want to make that point that that's not a logical reason if that was a claim, but if that's his reason. No, and you're right. Yeah. I think that does need to be said. I mean, if somebody yeah. does want to leave something just because somebody wronged them or just because just, that's, it's a, it's not a valid reason to Argument. leave because. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. but also but it's fine to vent out though. Like like a lot of people that became just recently became atheists. Um, sometimes like people that have been atheists for more than a decade, uh, they see that the when pe they see people that just recently became atheists, they're they're venting all their anger against all the stuff that they had to go through. People are like. Okay, um, maybe calm down a little bit. You get, you get through. Don't you know? You don't need to be this angry. But no, I think it's important to go through that phase. I mean, you just discovered that you've been lied to your entire life, and you're like, "What the hell?" Right? Like, you, you need to get that out of your system. So, uh, for for people like uh, uh, to make belittle the people that just became new, uh, recently atheists, to be like, "Oh yeah, I remember. I went through that phase." You you you'll um, you'll You'll get out of that, but as if it's as if that's immature. Well, Chris it's not Hightower immature. Chris just gave us a super chat. Oh, you guys you. rock! Thank oh. you, Chris. You rock! You're awesome. Oh, thank you, guys. That's today is very people are being very generous. But yeah, I'm just saying that the fact that you went through it, then you should allow other people to go through the same thing. Like it's not a your whole world has just turned upside down. Everything you thought about reality and nature and your own existence. You figure out okay, this is this is all was was a con, and you want to you want to tell people about it, and just because you uh, people are like oh th these people are still stuck in my what we, atheists went through in the nineteen nineties or the to, you know like well because they just became atheists, we need to have an a place for people to be able to vent. So just because I'm saying the anger that you have for your religious back uh, community is not a logical reason. That doesn't mean that I, I'm not in favor of people venting out, right? Like sometimes, you know, I'm just saying don't pick your beliefs based on that. But once you do pick it, you pick your, you know, beliefs or views based on logical reasons. Then after that, I think it's fine to vent as much as you want about whatever experience that you had because of your religious upbringing. And it seems like this, this guy, this pastor is doing the same thing. Let me see what the top comments are. 
Steven is saying when I was in eighth grade and I was read okay that's too long of a comment so I'm not gonna read that one let me see Scott is saying restaurant workers have been saying this for yet forever oh yeah because they don't get tips right they get like a well prayer. yeah not only that but if anyone especially if you live in the south I don't know uh, I've lived up in Chicago I don't think it's ever this bad but uh, Sundays I just prefer not to leave my house Sundays every restaurant everywhere is just filled with people who are there either to eat breakfast before church or have lunch after church. Um, it's just, it's filled. You're filled, you're packed. Um, everything is crazy. So the servers are having to serve a ton of Christians and it is a, um, a stereotype uh, here amongst servers that, you know, it's Sunday, so I'm not going to get paid today. Um, huh. I don't, so that's probably where that came from. No, no. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Brent is saying must have made enough money for his retirement. Oh, that's not fair. You don't know that. Um, let me see. Um, okay, so let me see if anybody in this live chat is saying. Well, the guy is kind of right because religion is a way of life. If this way of life creates assholes, then it has to be from the religion. Well, the thing. So when I was religious, the way I. It, made excuses for religious people that used to be you know dicks um was that well this is their fault it's not god's fault right so we say humans are not perfect when muslims are bad is because of muslims not because of islam right so that's the argument you would make as a, as a religious person or christians would say when christians are assholes it's because of christians not because of christianity right and you might, um, so, so just people being assholes is not enough for you to, I mean, Christianity itself has enough teachings without Christians being good or bad. It doesn't matter. You could just go right to the source and show how barbaric and how inhuman, you know, how, um, you know, backwards uh, these books are. It's whether people are good or not is irrelevant the teachings of christianity are evil the teachings of islam are evil regardless of how people behave right and you could just if people are if people are behaving in a certain way that you know, and a lot of th a lot of uh, bad behaviors from christians do come and muslims do can be uh, sourced back to the bible or to the quran but a lot of it can't right a lot of it is generally people be, you know is the people being dicks the same way other people without religion are being dicks right so we can't blame all of them on on christianity but and we don't need to because christianity is and islam are obviously evil without people having to act on it to prove that prove that to us that's my view anyways um okay yes yeah. so let's go to the next news next news North Dakota, USA. A North Dakota man pleads guilty to masturbating in church's baptismal pool during Mass. Yeah. Zachary Burdict, a 21-year-old, pleaded guilty to masturbating in and desecrating a baptismal pool inside of a church in Mandan, North Dakota. An employee saw Burdick take off his clothes and jump into the baptismal fountain near the entrance. He then dipped his rear end into the holy water fountain before splashing around and walking down the aisle while still masturbating, all while 75 people were attending mass. Now, if you're like me and you're thinking, oh my God, Atheist Republic, why are you talking about news that never happened, that couldn't possibly happen? Mm -hmm. I did research this to ensure that this happened. And um, the local news in North Dakota there has taken over talking about his bond, which is set at $5,000. Uh, uh, and because there were children as young as preschoolers in mass, oh, no. um, and he was masturbating while walking around, uh, he is facing a felon charge of indecent exposure, which of course would be registered as a sex crime. Um, Wait, what? Okay, is this guy like mentally ill or something? I don't <laughs> he was high on drugs, to oh. be fair, I guess. What? <laughs> He was high on drugs. What drugs? Can you tell me so I never touched that? What is <laughs> like do you know what drugs he was uh, high on? Unfortunately no, but part of his bond deal, uh, for the five thousand dollars, the judge did say that he couldn't ever go near this Catholic church again. 
Um, and he also had to take uh, drug counseling. So. Wait, if he was if he was high, can we can not can he not just use that as a defense and be like? Well, well I also saw that he changed his plea to not guilty, um, and they wouldn't say why. Well, because, because he was high. He has seventy five witnesses at least. No, but maybe because he's like, yeah, I'm I'm guilty of using drugs, but not guilty of this because I was high. Can you not say that? Maybe that's his defense now. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. Don't do this. <laughs> this is, please don't. Do, what the hell? Okay, that's kind of, that's disgusting. And children. How, children. That's the sad part. Yeah. I mean, yeah, children these, were in mass these watching kids were this guy walk down the aisle, masturbating, completely naked. Yeah, I don't know what to say to this. This is weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's this is gonna traumatize them for life. But was was this guy like? Why did he do it in a church? Did he had like? Do you know, like, do we know anything about this guy? Like, did he have... I tried finding that out because I was really curious. Why a church? Why not, like, a public swimming pool? Why not another body of water, right? right. Why a church specifically? And unfortunately, I couldn't get any information on it, on whether... I think I, I can gather that he's attended this church. I don't know if he's, like, a full member of this church or not. Um, I just can't tell you. Okay. I want to know. So he was masturbating while he was in the pool? And then continued masturbating as he got out of the out pool. Of the pool. How, the pool. While he's running? Yeah. <laughs> how you, so, so how do you... I, don't, I, <laughs> the, I have a really weird image right now in my head and I'm, I don't know how to get rid of it. But right. how would you do that? That doesn't even make... That's a... Okay. That's why I thought this was fake. I was like, there's no way. Um... But by the way, the, the church is upset because they had to, you know, clean that pool, obviously, um, and it and and sanitize it. So it cost them five hundred dollars. Uh, Wait, don't to, it? Isn't you know. the baptismal water already filled with shit? Like no, the, so the, so the, at least in the church that was my my grandfather, my dad's dad was Catholic, so I used to go to Catholic mass with him sometimes. There was this big. Uh, pool of water um in the front that like imagine like an underground pool in, right. indoors but it wasn't that big it was much smaller and it was like this fountain so uh that's what i'm imagining this was here is just this little pool um what, wait what kind of church was this was this a catholic church yeah this is a catholic church oh no so that's the pool for babies then it might be because catholics I... unlike other church, like other churches, you get you get baptized when you're an adult, but if it's Catholic, then that's where you put. So he basically masturbated in a pool that they dip babies in. Babies, Poor yeah. Babies. Okay. But they sanitized it. This is it. getting more yeah. fucked up. As okay, the five hundred dollars. How big was this pool? Okay. I don't. I don't think it was that big, but they had to like super sanitize it because it's holy water. It contains holy water. Right. Oh. oh okay maybe he okay i never know I, I know there's a lot of jokes here but i'm not gonna attempt it uh craig is saying does this technically count as the second coming oh there we go thank you craig that's that's a good one andrew is saying he was baptizing his kids uh just did a little <laughs> just did a little early <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these are good. Jonathan is saying, and the Lord said, come before me. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Douglas is saying, perhaps he misunderstood the priest saying immaculate conception and thought he, sa he said ejaculate confession. That's um, good. Larry, and by the way, somebody should deliver these jokes better than I am right now. Larry saying, <laughs> was he singing, oh, come all ye faithful? as he did it <laughs> okay and john is saying we must all prepare for the second coming of jesus christ uh live chat jack is saying is is it is the description actually a legal thing yeah desecration, oh, desecration. Actually uh, a legal jack thing? no it's not a legal thing that's just what the church is saying mm. um his exact um charges that I read that because it's changed since this um, this one that we posted. So it was actually on something else. Uh, it's for indecent exposure. 
um, that's what he pled down to. So, um, yeah, the desecration, that's just what the church is saying happened. Okay. So, Pam is saying this just ruined public pools for me. And Musa is saying this story is gross. Next. Okay, next. So, oh, uh, Chris said arm in the holy water bucket is usually filled with fecal matter, and that's what you're thinking of. Right. Holy water bucket. Bucket. Okay. So. Yeah, don't touch that stuff. Um, okay, next news. Next news. Ex-priest who got teen pregnant can keep his job as a middle school teacher. Former Reverend Joseph Deshaun, 59, and a veteran New Jersey teacher who once had a, con had a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old girl and got her pregnant, all while he was a Catholic priest, can keep his middle school job, an arbitrator ruled. He began teaching in the Cinnamon School District in 1996, six years after he impregnated the teen who worked in his parish rectory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. The state ruling said the parents said their children felt unsafe being taught by a rapist and a pedophile who had no business being around juveniles, especially those close in age to the girl he impregnated the document said so this yeah this this catholic priest raped a 14 year old girl got her pregnant and they're saying it's all cool guy continue teaching other 14 year olds wait how is this happening isn't that not where is this is that not criminal uh, this is this is now out of new jersey when this happened it was in connecticut <sighs> so um, wait, isn't that like how is this even possible? Like, how can you even get a job with such a criminal record? How is he not going to jail? Yeah, what? Like, even before... Yeah, how is... I don't understand. Can you explain this to me? How the is this only possible? thing I can think of, and I might not be right on this, so if somebody knows for sure, please correct me. The only thing I can think of here is that some states in America uh, have a statute of limitations oh. on rape. Um, or or child sexual abuse. Um, and so this might be one of those cases where this is past the statute of limitations, um, and so they're just allowing this to go on. I don't understand how this works. So, like, in the United States, we have, we have a person that many, many years ago had sex with a 17-year-old. Uh, like, I don't know exactly the same age, but he was just one year older. So he was the adult and she was a minor. And even though they only had a one year gap, he's after so many years, he still has that on his record that he had sex with a minor. So, so it's so ridiculous that he is now he has he eventually married that woman and he had children with her. But because this was on his record, he couldn't see his own children, even though the person that he had sex with was only one year younger than her him. And that guy has to deal with it for so many years after that ridiculous, you know, charge. And this guy rapes a 14 year old. And he's like, not only he doesn't go to, not only he, he gets to, he doesn't have a record. He gets to keep the same job. Like, how is this not double standard? Is it is this the case of states having different laws, or is this the case yes. of re religion having a privilege, or both? I don't. Know. This is definitely a case of uh, probably both. Um, you know how I feel about the Catholic Church and their avoidance of of paying for their crimes against children, um, but. Absolutely. Every state has different laws on, on how old a child, a teenager can be before they can have sex with an adult. Um, in, in a few of our states, uh, a child can be as young as 14, but there's, there are limitations on the age of their sexual partner. Like their partner, you can start having sex when you're 14, but uh, your partner can't be older than three years, um, three years older than you. So, you know, this, however, would break any of the state laws because he was an adult, um, you know, and she was 14 years old. So automatically this disqualifies that law. And what mm -hmm. this is to me is I'm thinking maybe this is one of those cases where the, um, the statute of limitations has passed on rape. Did he, do you know if he went to prison at all? No. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lucy saying sick of this wording, got teen pregnant. Oh, so he is, so she has a problem with the title. Uh, and had a sexual relationship rape he raped her can we just say it like it is well lastly we didn't pick the title 
go talk to and this is in the New York Post, but I'm sure she's not saying that to us, right? Um, yeah. Right. So Jeff is saying, why didn't they run with the Virgin Birth line? It's worked before. Uh, Igor is saying, at least you know he really loves the kids. What? I don't understand. Is that a joke? It was uh, a terrible joke. Yeah. yeah. Um, Beej is saying, I'm glad Canada has laws on age difference. He wouldn't get away with it on that. But that. But what about breach of trust? Shouldn't that apply? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Okay. But this is this this is a Catholic church, right? Yes, because uh, he was a priest. And what I'm saying, what I'm uh, seeing here is that the arbitrator ruled that the, this was just oh, an sorry. allegation. Um, is this a, is this a so sorry? When I said the same job, I thought this was a Catholic school or something. Was this a Catholic school or just any any school? Like, is yeah, this, I believe this was just any school. What the hell's wrong with the school? Because like, they're talking about he was he started teaching in the uh, Cinnamonson School District. Oh. Um, so definitely is not just a specific Catholic school. He is out there in a school district teaching these children. Um, and it looks to me like they really didn't do much investigating into this case at all. Huh. Um, weird, weird. Sad. Like, wouldn't the, wouldn't the reaction be like, oops, sorry, we made a mistake. We let him go. Like, isn't that the easy solution? Because like, I don't know. I mean, what what kind of school is this? Is weird. Like, they, aren't they, aren't parents are just gonna take their kids? Parents out are of outraged. Yeah, and nothing gets a school district to move faster than some mad mamas up on their <laughs> doorstep. So I hope right. these parents yeah. continue to go up there and say, "No, yeah. uh, you're not gonna get my tax money for this." Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Okay. Let's go to the next news. Next news is out of the United States. A reporter is dragged away after confronting a televangelist. Why do you need a $54 million jet? An Inside Edition report is getting a lot of attention after it focused on the luxurious lifestyles of prominent Christian televangelists Jesse Duplantis and Kenneth Copeland, who, according to the report, drive fancy cars and live inside a lavish mansion. Um, and they fly some of the best private jets money can buy. Inside Edition Chief Investigative Correspondent Lisa Guerrero attempted to question Duplantis about his need for a jet, but she was quickly grabbed and pulled away by security. She was accosted by these security officials and whisked away. Is there a clip for this? Can we show that or no? We might get a copyright strike, so maybe I wouldn't. Oh, yeah. there is a clip for it. There is a clip. Should I show it? Yeah, show it. Maybe if I show it without audio, we wouldn't get copyright strike. What do you think? Let's let's show it. Okay. We would. Okay. So we're. This is fair use, YouTube. Okay. We're not. We're not. We're just reviewing it. So please don't strike us. Um, how do I show the entire screen? Let me see. There we go. I'm just gonna show it without audio. Uh, describe it to the people. No, I'm going to show it with audio, sorry. Because the podcast people then wouldn't be here. Hold on. Ooh, this is this is intense. I'd like to know why you need a prank. Keep your hands off me. Why are your people touching me like... Wait, let's go a little bit back. Sorry, guys. Ah, shouldn't have done that. Now YouTube is... Book signing. Why do you need a $54 million private jet? We're not doing a, any kind of interviews right now. I'm in a book. I'd just like to know why you need a... Pre Keep your hands off me. Why are your people touching me like this? Because you need to... Let go of me. Oof. The next day, back on the pulpit... All right. Okay, that was enough. Because I don't, if I show any more, I might get a copyright strike. Okay. Um, I mean, if they t if they touch her like that, she should call... She should press charges. If they if they manhandled her like that, right? Oh, I hope they. I hope she does. Yeah, I mean, if they get fifty, if they have enough money for a fifty-four million dollar jet, then she should, you know, go. They have enough money to pay her for this for treating her like this. I mean, this this looks extremely bad. Like, so she was trying to embarrass them for buying a fifty-four million dollar jet, and they thought, oh, here's a good idea. Let's just f forcibly remove her from here. That's not going to look bad. I mean, that looks even worse than buying a $54 million jet, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> right. It does. Um, yeah, um, but I'm, I'm happy people are asking these questions because uh, where I live, you know, I live 
really close to where Joel Olstein's uh, church is. So, um, you know, it's so huge. And <laughs> it's just the biggest, massive, one of these mega churches um, ever. And so, you know, yeah, we, we saw we saw their nasty, disgusting behavior uh, back when Harvey hit, Hurricane Harvey. And there were thousands of people out of a home. Thousands of people needed a place to go. And while we had a guy named Mattress Mac opening up his warehouses to take people in, uh, when when Joel Olstein was asked, can people from Houston come stay in your church for a night so we can figure out what to do? He says, no, <laughs> we're not going to take them in. So we see that we see these people. They take everyone's money. They get 10 percent of people's yearly salaries and tithes. Um, where is this money really going? What are they really doing with it? When we see other mega church people living in these huge mansions and they have these Royals Royces and and private jets. Um, how are people not wondering what's going on here? Right. Who who is she? Because she that was a very you know, you know brave thing to do. I mean, I admire her. Like we want to encourage more of that uh, of th what this reporter is doing. So who is she? Like can we, can people go start following her and like uh, congratulating her for doing some good reporting? Like Lisa Guerrero. She's with Inside Edition. Anyone who um. I don't know if they still have a show because I haven't had cable in like uh, seven years. But <laughs> Inside Edition used to actually have their own like uh, TV reportive uh, show that went on. Um, and yeah, so I mean, absolutely. Lisa Guerrero with Inside Edition, if anyone wants to follow her. Um, yeah. What, uh, so and um, what should we? Yeah, maybe we should link. We should post the video directly as well on on, on Atheist Republic because we want we want the video direct to get more views directly so that they get encouraged to do this more but okay so if you were uh, what what would be a good excuse uh, if you were like a church that is 54 million dollars like wow like for, for even, one jet that's just for the jet <laughs> <laughs> like they you, it means that they have enough, so much money they don't know how to, like they're struggling on what to do with all this money that's that they're like damn it we like how do we spend all this money 54 million dollars like they're not even trying to we, the people that follow these churches they must they they probably like this like they don't see this as uh as them being hypocrites they want their pastors to be rich because they think they must be on god's side if they're this successful right like i know some Christians want their past don't don't like that but there are a lot of people that see that as they must be on God's side right if they see them being so successful in life like God must be showing them a favor of this but but if you were one of these uh you know preachers how would you like if you were trying to come up with an excuse what would you say why would you need why do you need a private jet to I mean, do God's work you know, yeah. um, you you don't want to. Uh, I I don't. Know, I'm lost. <laughs> I would my I would I would try to keep my answers short as to not talk myself out of things. But I don't. I mean, what what other excuse could you give? I'm just trying to see if I'm a good if I could be a, a good bullshit artist or not. But I would say <laughs> that um, the more time I'm not in lines and on the airport. And waiting for my next flight the more I'm talking to God's children the more I'm sharing the good news right so right. so when I'm trying to go from one place to another place and talk to people and bring the good news to people the every single minute that I'm in the airport that's one other person that I could have reached that I didn't see but and if people see, wanted to believe you they would believe you but what I'd come back to you and say you, you, you're exposed to way more people in the airport and in a plane. Once you have them in a plane, you they can't ignore you. <laughs> you're no, but reaching that would, tons of more people. Okay, then I will say to you, no, I can't because that would be a place where they don't want to be bought, be bothered. I want people to come to a place where they know this is a place of worship. When pe when I'm when I'm talking people to people on an airport on a plane, that's not a right place. That there, I'm not invited there to preach. I want. I want people to come to me where they know this is a place where I preach, right? So right. That's, that would be harassment. That's why I wouldn't do it in an airport. 
See, I, I can, look at you. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> you just found your retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> right. They, see, they should have this. This guy uh, should have given me one one million dollars instead of having these people uh, drag yeah. this poor woman away. I would have given him that answer and for as a PR director, and he would have been. It would be a lot better for their for their image. See, they should have hired <laughs> me instead. Uh, okay, Chester is saying these charlatans would never exist if there weren't so many stupid people giving them money. Go interview those idiots. Um, also, I want to know why. Well, those don't. I mean, the, the, those idiots that are giving them money. I don't want people to hate them. I consider them the victims. So yeah, people are stupid, but they don't deserve to be losing this much money because of their stupidity, right? I don't think that's fair. I think like I consider them victims of this of this disease. Jack is saying, I can't remember who said it, but one excuse was genuinely to be closer to God, as in heaven is apparently up there. Jesus, these people have that much money and they can't come up with better excuses? See, my excuse was a lot better than that. It so, was. I mean, if they have this much money, they should hire me. <laughs> um, Danny is saying to be closer to God. Oh, Danny is saying the same thing as Jack is saying. Okay. Now, honestly, like... Maybe they should spend some money on some people coming up with better bullshit answers than, than you know. Yeah. yeah okay. Rather than getting sued for accosting poor reporters. Yeah, I mean, this is this this video is going to be used forever now, like as an example. Uh, it's going to be, you know. Anyways, let's go to the next news. Next news is out of West London. The Siachi Gallery covers up SKU artworks after complaints by Muslims. A leading contemporary art gallery covered up works featuring an Islamic declaration of faith after complaints from Muslim visitors who said the artworks were blasphemous. Paintings by SKU deemed blasphemous for combining Islamic text with nude images. The gallery decided to cover up two paintings that incorporated the text of the Shahada and one of the five pillars of Islam, an Arabic script juxtaposed with images of nude women in the style of the U.S. flag. The head of the Islamic studies at the think tank Quilliam Yusama Hassan said the works were really dangerous, adding it's the satanic verses all over again. Wait, what? Dangerous? No, it's dangerous that you're covering them because that's an where 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 is this happening? This is in... this is in West London. So okay, at so the UK. Saatchi Gallery. Okay, so in the UK. Wait, and Quilliam is saying that these the art is dangerous. Not Quilliam is supposed to be a pro-free speech organization and they're saying the art is dangerous not the fact that they're covering it up right they're saying the art is really dangerous what the hell quilliam um uh, is this the same quilliam that is majid nawaz works in that founded by majid nawaz is that the same organization that we're talking about or is that something different i mean it's gotta be right i, don't know, I can't think of two Williams. So really, like, I'm, I'm hoping that we're misreading this. Quilliam is saying the art is the art is the problem and not the covering it up. That's that's disappointing if that's what they're saying. Um, what? Why is it dangerous? Wait, and they, when they say this is the satanic verses all over again, are they suggesting that the satanic verses by Salman Rushdie that was a mistake? That's what it looks like. And, and mind you, this is just this one guy, Osama Hassan, who's saying this. But he is the head of the Islamic Studies at Quilliam. Um, yeah, what the hell? What the, No. No. The, the U, we, okay, we're losing UK, okay? One of the countries responsible for Enlightenment values, for which is the main one is free speech and freedom of expression, has completely lost it, okay? They have completely lost it in, in the meaning of freedom of expression and freedom of speech. Like, really? You guys think the art is dangerous? You don't think the fact that we're covering art? We're covering art because it's degenerate? You know, the people that consider art, certain arts as degenerate and cover them up or burn them? Do you know who you're sounding like? Do you think the art is there? You don't see the fact that we're we're deciding what's allowed to be seen and what's not allowed to be seen? You don't see that as a dangerous part? Are you guys fucking serious? 
Are you guys fucking serious? We're censoring art and you think the art is part of the problem? What the hell is happening to the UK? Every time I think like some people might be exaggerating about the free speech issues in the UK. And then we keep getting stories like this. Right. I'm hoping like we're misunderstanding Qualium. Because if Qualium is saying this, then we have lost it. Like, I mean, abandon ship, everybody. Um, well, you know, I just really want to make sure everybody heard me that this is just the head of Islamic studies. Um... Usama Hassan from Quilliam that's saying this, um, you know. So this this is just I don't know. But, so w you mentioned some other organization at the beginning. Um, did you mention any other organizations before Quilliam? Um, no. just just the paintings by yeah. SKU and yeah. the Sahachi Gallery. Okay, so just to be clear, Quilliam is the organization that sued uh, the Southern uh, Poverty Law Center. Is that the name? SPLC. Yeah. yeah. All right. So for for considering Majid Nevels to be uh, an extremist, and they won, and that was that's a that's actually a campaign that I donated to to Quilliam because they were fighting for freedom of expression and freedom of speech, and they were fighting against organizations that were trying to limit free speech, right? Limit expression. And if this is now the position that Quilliam is taking. I'm really, this really saddens me. I'm hoping that we're misunderstanding. Anybody can, does anybody uh, want to clarify if they know anything about this? If, because I, I want to give the Quilliam the benefit of the doubt. Um, so I'm saying, I think it was in, guys, let's keep the, let's keep it about this story, about the UK. Anybody, anybody wants to know if this, okay, so Jack is saying, it was Os Osama that gave a comment, not Quilliam. Uh, David, director, does not agree with it being covered. Okay, so okay, so let's be fair then. So that's so, that's what I was saying. Yeah, this you're is just one person. Okay, so you're saying this is he's when he was saying that he was not representing the organization. Well, um, he was just representing himself. Huh. Well, what we were saying something. <laughs> <laughs> that that's it's kind of hard to say it's it's like um right now if i were to go out and say something you know terrible racist or bigoted uh, you know would would you consider that as me saying it by myself or don't you think atheist republic would be affected atheist republic would obviously be affected you can't no, but you could clarify that this is your position not atheist republic. he didn't mm -hmm. he didn't clarify but i think jack did let us know that david the director does not agree with it being covered so this has to just be his one opinion but it's still in my opinion, it doesn't look good. Right. And Jack is saying um, Osama maintains that they have the right to cover it. Yeah, of course. Okay, yes, yeah, they have the right to cover it. But the fact that they had to give in to pressure, to me, that shows the, da the uh, rising da danger of the limitations of freedom of expression in the UK, right? So for Osama to identify the painting as dangerous rather than the fact that the paint that the museum gave into pressure and had to cover the art that's the dangerous part i think when he misidentifies what's dangerous to me that's that's a huge red flag right? right the fact when people say like oh we have the right to cover it yeah we didn't say you don't have the right to cover it we're not talking about what you're the you're right we're talking about the fact that fear and intimidation is being used as a as a weapon for people to use their rights to okay. limit expression. Yes. I'm hearing an echo, by the way. Uh, that Beach, was me. Sorry. That's okay. Beach is uh, talking. Uh, okay, Beach has more information. Thank you, Beach. This, it's great to have Beach and Jack and everyone else here. And Sopan also. Uh, okay. Because they have they clarify things. Beach is saying Majid doesn't agree. The fact. So, I think Majid is on our side when it comes to you know, freedom of expression. Uh, Beach is saying the fact uh, this... Um, Spectacle, uh, spectacle is the result of an overly sensitive Muslim sense of blasphemy. blasphemy we just uh, got a super chat, Armin. Oh, thank you. RPG gamer Again. guy. He says, um, or she, sorry. If you're so offended by a piece of art, you can always walk away. There is that option. It's no different than breastfeeding or, than the breastfeeding argument. I totally agree. Yeah, um, yeah as, as an artist myself, I find any kind of... Uh, uh, gallery or organization being forced or museum being forced to cover or not display art uh, personally insulting like I, I 
Yeah, and actually, I want to see the art now. Yeah. I want to see. We should. We should. Okay. We should. Oh, actually, then we might get a copyright strike. Never mind. We do we get a copyright? Yeah, art is actually very sensitive to show, so we we can't show. It. But go figure out what. Um, yeah, I don't know if we can show it or not. But but Beach was making a point. She's saying this is incredibly embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing is that this is a huge win for uh, for Muslims using us being offended as a weapon. Every time it wins, it encourages them to take more, right? And I think the only react, the main reaction to the two people saying this is offensive, you shouldn't take it down, uh, should always be that we're going to now do it a thousand times more, just to make a point that you don't get to tell us to censor ourselves just because you're sensitive about saying something like that whenever people try to use being offended as a method to intimidate people to censor themselves that has to backfire because that weapon should not work that method should not work we have to show people that that never works in fact you're going to get the opposite result as what you were hoping for we should not give them this win this has to backfire this has to backfire or else they're going to get encouraged and they're going to keep doing it more and more you think this satisf satisfies people you think when people say oh i'm offended don't show this and you start you you censor yourself you think we're like okay good we're good now and they're going to walk away no you just signal to them that they have the power they're going to go for more oh god let me see what the top yeah are. You're going to see what the top comments are. Um, this guy is saying, can we demand that church bells and the Muslim shouters <laughs> stay quiet because they insult uh, our atheist uh, sensibilities? Well, I mean, the Quran, the Quran, I mean, if you want to be offended by something, be offended by the Quran and the Bible. I mean, they have the most barbaric uh, teachings in them uh that's that's le a legitimate source of offense so i mean we, yes the devil standard is so painful i mean i don't even want to make that point anymore because i've made it a million times like if anything should get banned for being too offensive the quran and the bible would be the first on uh, on the line as things that need to be banned yeah. oh what wow, this is th these people are actually posting the painting let me see it's on facebook I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to show it, but okay. I think we're allowed to show it because we're reviewing it. Hmm. I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but we have to, we now have to spread this everywhere because actually this one is kind of pretty. I don't know, but, uh, the, the more people need to now see this art, uh, spec these are because, because, because they've been bad. And who's the artist? At least like, now that we're showing them, let's give credit to the artist. Do you know who the SKU. artist is? SKU. SK, that's the name of the artist? Yeah. Okay. SKU. Is there any way we could support the artist? I don't know. Okay. Maybe we could link to the art, find the artist's website or something and just link directly to the artist's website. Just that to would support, be great. Just to support. Yeah. His, uh, his or her work. Uh, Muska is saying art is subjective. You can't please everyone. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. But well, and, and that's not even the point of art yeah. for most artists. Most artists don't want you to be pleased with their work. Look, if, if you don't see artwork and feel something, whether it be happiness, love, hatred, anger, if you're not feeling something, then it's ineffective, useless art. Um, and that is that is the way uh, at least the artists in my circle feel about it as well. So yes, it's subjective, but I want to see things that offend me. I want to be angered. I want to be moved to emotion when I look at art. And that is why artists push harder and harder and harder to make things, um, you know, more more objective to people. All right, let's go to the next news. Next news is out of Poland, Armin. Woman arrested in Poland over posters of Virgin Mary with rainbow halo. A woman has been arrested in suspicion of offending religious sentiment after posters bearing the image of the Virgin Mary with her halo painted in the colors of a rainbow flag appeared in the city of Plock 
in central Poland. A Plak police spokeswoman confirmed a 51-year-old woman had been arrested over the alleged offense, offending religious feeling as a crime under the Polish penal code. If convicted, the woman could face prison sentence up to two years. Two years. Holy shit. Are you serious, Poland? What the fuck, Poland? Like, are you, this is part of the free world. Apparently, Poland is supposed to be a more... Are you, are you, I, I couldn't believe that this could happen in Poland. Like, they're acting like an Islamic country. I guess they're trying to compete. Christians are competing with <laughs> Islamic countries now. Like, are you serious? I didn't know this could happen in Poland, really? I know Poland was a, a lot more religious than other European countries. I, I, I thought that just meant that people are, on average, are more religious. I didn't know the laws are religious. Like, how are, how is this allowed? Like, they're, they're part of the European Union. This should not be blasphemy laws should be against the European Union. Isn't that like how could they, they can, as a member, they shouldn't be able to do this? It should be. But, you know, Atheist Republic, us as an organization ourselves, got involved with protest to the UN, um, protesting people who still have these kind of laws based to imprison their citizens for thinking. Um, you know, the UN should not be allowing countries like this to hold in my opinion uh these kinds of laws it's it's barbaric yeah, but i'm talking about the european union right because they're a member state mm -hmm. and this is part they can't be a member state and do this this kind of bullshit this um i mean i don't know somebody should bring this to the european human rights commission or something yeah this is, this that's is a, a very good this point anti-free freedom of expression in europe for fuck's sakes and again, this should backfire. We need to spread this. We need to. Who? What's the? Who's the art? Is this an artist kind of work? Like, who's the artist? Is was she the artist, or was she just posting it? Um, she was just posting, or she just yeah, she was just posting it. Um, I don't think that she's the artist. If she was, it doesn't say so. Mm. Um, but they found several dozen dozen of these images, so I don't think it was just posting. Like, she actually had posters. Um, of this as well. So, um, okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Renzo is clarifying in the live chat. He's saying blasphemy laws are allowed in the EU. Oh, what yeah, blasphemy that? laws are allowed. It's just I just what don't the think they fuck should be. You? Um, and by the way, I don't know, Armin, if you click on the video, it has an image um, of video? what she had. Yeah. Oh, there's a video for this. Okay, let me see. Uh, let's bring up the video. But we need to, we, this art needs to backfire as well. Like this is to, people, more people need to embarrass. Let's see. By the way, a lot of people, when I try to show the video, they think that my image disappears. No, I'm just trying to make the screen bigger. That's why my video, where is the video? I, it's not in the article. So it's not a video, it's just an image of the poster. Oh, okay. No, the, people can see that already. It's in the, it's in the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Um... Okay, never mind. But let me see what the top comment is. Um, David is saying, so much shame to be Polish. No, don't be ashamed to be Polish. Don't be proud if Poland does something good and don't be ashamed because you did not do it, okay? You're not responsible for actions of other people, uh, right. even, if it's your, even, even if it's your country. Tim is saying, I had no idea that Poland was this backward. Yeah, I didn't know. Actually, one thing I just realized recently when in a documentary was that uh, Polish um, politics is very influenced by uh, the Catholic Church in Poland, right? There's this one guy, one Polish guy that has a lot of influence, uh, one Catholic priest in Poland that ha controls a lot of the media in Poland. And everyone that wants to get elected has to go kiss the ring of this priest before like has to go and to a ceremony and he televises like everybody his approval this priest guy in Poland is very important for you to be able to get elected so uh, Catholic Church has a lot of influence in Poland unfortunately which you know a lot of people consider European countries to be a lot more mature than this kind of backwards thinking but here we are Poland apparently has not got the memo that we're in a, in a new era. They're still back. Okay, Roman is saying Poland is going backwards. What a joke. Yeah, actually, not only Poland, not it's not only that Poland is 
uh, religious, it, it does seem that they're also going backward. Like I think things are getting worse in Poland. So people, uh, if pe if we're if you're from Poland and know anything about this, please comment. Let us know. Um, Another comment is saying people imagined the halo God created rainbows. Who's blaspheming now? Um, see, okay, Renzo. It's good that we have Renzo here because he has a lot of good information on the EU. Renzo is saying a couple of EU countries still enforce blasphemy laws. Uh, Poland, Germany. Are you serious? Um, Austria, Italy, Greece, Finland, Scotland, Northern uh, Northern Ireland. Renzo, are you saying? they actually enforce it or they just have it on their books because there's a huge difference between just having an outdated law on their books that they don't enforce than this example like in Poland that they actually are enforcing blasphemy rules. Are you saying... Yeah, that's, all what Jack, that's what Jack is saying in the chat. They don't enforce the laws. They just haven't redacted them. Yeah, but Poland seems to be actually enforcing it. So yeah, I, wa I wonder if these other countries that Renzo mentioned, they just have it on their books or... Uh, and I know recently Ireland, um, thanks to the active, uh, th thanks to the work that Atheist Ireland has done, which is an organization in Ireland, uh, Ireland recently removed all their blasphemy laws. Right, so that was huge progress in Ireland, and th that's again people when people say, "Oh, we can't make a difference. This is how things are." No, because of the because of the activism of groups like Atheist Ireland. They remove blasphemy laws from their books. And that was a country where this was having an impact on what people were saying. A lot of yeah. traditional media were not criticizing religion on, on traditional media because of the blasphemy laws in Ireland. And atheist activists removed those laws. So don't tell me activism doesn't have an impact. Renzo is saying they are rarely enforced in most countries. Okay, thank you for that, Renzo. That's very good information. Um... Somebody on uh, live says saying, "How do you know? Uh, how do you know that uh, Poland has um, have some of the strongest blasphemy laws in the Western world? How do we know? Well, because of news like this. A, a YouTube. My name is. Oh, by the way. Um, so RPG. I know who RPG Gaming is. That's Chris. Chris is. Oh. Uh, Chris is also a patron. So now, whenever you see the RPG in live chat, mention mention Chris. So just okay. say Chris." That, that'll work for me. Yeah. So I'm is saying, um, okay. So I'm is saying, um, okay. I don't know what he's saying. Are are still in the books? Oh, yes. So, uh, so Subham is is asking, as long as they're still in the books, isn't it possible for people to convict someone based on those laws? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and America is, is a great example of that. We still have blasphemy laws in some states that uh, just recently, Pennsylvania, oh, if you want to call it recently, I mean, yeah, a couple but, years ago, uh, they enforced a blasphemy law. So having it on the books means that they can indeed enforce blasphemy laws. Right. So in the United States, it's unconstitutional to enforce the blasphemy laws, even though they st some states still have them in their books but even though it's unconstitutional it takes a lot of efforts to like somebody could technically enforce them and then you have to go through all the legal costs and trouble to actually challenge them in the supreme you know you like just because it's against the constitution that doesn't mean people can't use them to harass people That's and right. bankrupt them from f because they're using all spending all their money on legal fees to be able to challenge a law that is against the constitution um anyways let's go to the next news next news is out of the usa this angry young preacher says atheists are all coke drinking video game addicts Matt Powell, a Christian teacher, yelled about the things he hates about atheists in his YouTube video titled 22-Year-Old Preacher Rants Against Atheism. He said they can't think for themselves. They sit back and drink Coke all day. They sit behind the video game system and then they wonder why. Oh, you're so crazy, Brother Paul, for believing in a creator. Oh, you're insane. No, you're crazy and you need to get off the video game system and somebody needs to preach uh, to him the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they can be saved. So this uh, this this young 22-year-old aspiring uh, preacher thinks that all of us hang out all day, make fun of Christians, calling them crazy. Uh, we drink Coke and play video games. I mean, it sounds like the life to me. It sounds awesome. But, um, you know, unfortunately, no. I, I, I think that preachers, especially young preachers, do these kinds of things to start making a name for themselves. 
I mean, we don't need to make fun of Christians because he's doing our job for us, I think. It, like, he's he doing a better job. Come on, guy. <laughs> but but I, I want to make a point about this. Imagine if this guy, like, so what's going to happen to this guy? Nothing, right? Like, he, this yeah. is, he's just going to get some attention and it's fine. Uh, we can make, you know, but imagine if the title was, oh, shit, YouTube is going to think that I'm saying this. But um, imagine he said th this angry young preacher says Jewish people are this and this and do this and that, right? Right. Or if, if another person said, you know, Muslims are blah, 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 or Christian, you know? So I just think that nobody gives a shit about atheists. Like if we, uh, I mean, where was this posted? Friendly Atheists, right? So it's an, an, an atheist website, atheist news website, right? But this is probably not going to get picked up by any by any traditional media by any news sor sources. But it would have, if I, again, when I say people would complain a, a lot more if this if he was saying something negative about Jewish people. I'm not saying that that shouldn't get attention. Of course, that should get attention. That's wrong, and all the attention that that would that news would get would be well deserved, right? In fact, whatever attention it gets, prob it probably should get more attention. But what I'm saying is that it's, it's, it shows how far behind we are in atheist activism and atheist advocacy. When this people get, there is no um, image. There is no cost to be bigoted against atheists. Hey, Armin, uh, Casey Atheist is saying in our chat that he called, he also called for the government to execute LGBTQ people. Right. And I remember when he said that, that got media coverage, right? But this would not get media coverage because huh, it's just atheists. Who gives a shit about atheists, right? This is, you know, this, this needs to be called out. We need to, like, when you generalize any group of people, uh, people get angry. So why is it that atheists, when they, you general, generalize atheists, when you you don't get the same kind of reaction? We should. We are. We need to be the voice that uh, fills that gap, right? I mean, what, like the Satanic Temple. I mean, I'm sorry. I know a lot of people want to, you know, complain about them and things like that. that they're just making atheists look bad because they're atheists yeah. who want to piss off Christians with their name. Well, well, it's not what they're doing. What they've done is they've gone out and they've built a church. They've gone out and they've now said they're they're fighting. For rights um, that that go against religious laws that we have in place, especially with abortion and things like that, they're they're saying that these abortion laws uh, interfere with their Satanist Satanist ideas. They fight, they fight when they get attacked. Right. They fight. Atheists, though, I mean, what are we going to do? So we are yeah. behind. You're absolutely right. We're behind. You're very behind, and that's what we, that's why we that's why we are cha trying to change the activism that we're doing on Atheist Republic. Right? We want to. Be part of the solution right now. But one thing I would want to give credit credit to Muslims and Jews and Christians, uh, even though we disagree with their ideologies and we think every the things that they believe in is ridiculous. But one thing you could give them credit for is that they they look after each other, right? When Christians are prosecuted in Egypt, you, all the Christian church. Churches, they, 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 they're like, what the fuck, right? You could go to every church that I know, like, they have, like, they talk about it, right? They're like, hey, they're, you know, they're messing with other Christians in Egypt. Like, what the fuck? Like, we need to talk to our, you know, we write letters to your government officials. Do this, do that, right? Um, well, with Muslims, I give, you give them some credit, but I also want to blame Muslims that they don't care much about the Muslims in, in China, the, uh, you know, Muslim when Muslim gets prosecuted, a lot of Muslims start um, talking about it. But it has it mostly if it's in Palestine or if it's being done by white supremacists. Uh, I do criticize Muslims for not paying attention enough to uh, the oppression that Muslims are facing in China. But in general, most of them are doing a better job than the atheist community is. The atheist community has not is not looking after our atheists. They're not. We haven't become organized and loud enough to make it costly for people to go after atheists like this. Let's see what the top right. comment is. Stan is saying, still better than being a pedophile in the name of a false deity. Uh, 
Well, we don't want to generalize, again, if we, if we want people not to generalize atheists, we don't want to generalize Christians as well. Um, we don't want to act like if you are a priest, uh, then you must be a child molesting pedophile. Okay, so generalization as a whole, we don't agree with that. Essa is saying, I love Pepsi and video games. Uh, Pedro is saying, I play video games and then I drink Coke. He got the order all wrong. Uh, Rusty is saying, so I spent five minutes trying to figure out how to drink cocaine then. I realized they mean soda. Wait, what? I don't know. Uh, so, oh, Coke drinking. Right, <laughs> I I get it. Okay, so so he calls us coke drinking. Yeah, I whenever when I saw the title first, I thought he was saying that we 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 we're drug addicts. Jack is saying the generalization is pretty stupid too. Even if it was true, who cares if people drink coke and are addicted to games? It's not dangerous to others. Hmm. I mean, don't drink sugary stuff, <laughs> and. Play video games, but don't be addicted to video games. So I don't, I don't agree with that, Jack. I don't think you should be addict, addict, addicted to video games. I think you should just play them as a hobby. So Pam is saying, is it really that atheists are more prosecuted than LGBT people in the West? I have heard a lot of people say it, but I never believed it before. I don't know. Um, it doesn't matter if we're more persecuted. The point is that we are, uh, atheists are. Uh, we need to, it's not like we're not trying to uh, compete in the victimhood narrative, but the fact is that it is one of the worst. It doesn't have to be the worst for, for it to be um, worth talking about, right? Right. Um, Vanilla in the live chat is saying um, that she read an article about priests in Egypt wanting to have women cover up more. Vanilla, if you don't mind, can you drop that article in our comment section um, after the show? That would be awesome. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next news. Next news, Indian hate preacher Zakir Nayak charged with money laundering. And this is out of India, everybody. The Islamic preacher Zakir Nayak, who lives in exile, is accused of acquiring $28 million worth of criminal assets, a claim that he denies. Indian authorities also have accused him of spreading hate speech and inciting terrorism. Mr. Nayak, which I think he's a doctor, so um, we might want to change that. Uh, 53 promotes a radical form of Islam on the channel Peace TV. It is banned in India, but has estimated 200 million viewers worldwide. India's enforcement directorate, ED, um, which investigates financial crimes, filed the charge against Mr. Nayak in the court of Mumbai. I don't know if people know how famous this guy is. Like the, the amount, the, the if audience. If you've ever, ever, ever <laughs> spoken to a Muslim on Facebook or Twitter. <laughs> at some point. They have sent you his videos. <laughs> well, Sunny ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like every, yeah, like, yeah, you're so, like, every, at some point in the conversation when you're debating with a Muslim on, on your Facebook, you know, messenger. At some point when they give up on you and they don't they don't want to talk to you anymore, they just send you one of his videos like, just watch this, you will become a Muslim, right? After you watch this, you will understand everything. To me, that's it. Like, so that's how famous this guy is. I mean, the audience that this guy has, like some of our biggest politicians uh, in, you know, in the West or in US, for example, like don't enjoy that level of, um, you know, that big of an audience. This guy, when he speaks millions of people are listening to him and oh, to yeah. me it says a lot when a muslim when they give up on you like so some muslims just say like oh just read the quran but more people actually tell you to just watch this guy's videos instead of reading the quran right to me sure that shows how how popular this is where their last attempt at converting you is not just sending you a quran video is this guy right it's this guy <laughs> But um, but okay. So what are the what are the um, what are the comments that India is accusing him of? Um, you know, terrorists. What is what? What did they say? What is he being charged for? Before so the this money laundering charges are new, 
right? Right. He's but, also being charged of promoting religious hatred and unlawful activity. So, um, yeah, I mean, and, and he has not just banned in India, believe it or not, he's also banned in Bangladesh um, because some of his some of his speeches and videos that he's given, the, he demands people go out and be terrorists. He says, yes, in the name of, of Allah, let's do this. Um, and that's actually somebody who was watching his videos in Bangladesh in 2016, killed 22 people in a cafe uh, and and gave um, Dr. Nayak the credit for it, saying, you know, he moved me to do this. So um, he's banned in other countries as well. And obviously, if, if you watch a lot of his videos i do not um but you know a lot of people do say yeah he, his videos do incite hatred and since he's running this peace tv out of mumbai uh or is it dubai no yeah he's definitely he's broadcasting out of dubai um yeah. because he's broadcasting it out of india they're charging him for the hate speech right um I mean, you have to be careful what India calls hate speech because India <laughs> um, right now is in a situation where anything Islamic could be labeled as hate speech. I mean, technically, yeah. everything Islamic is hate speech, but but India, I mean, not legally, though. Um, but a lot of his stuff, I mean, he like he does he does uh, push for, for terroristic acts. Um, does he really? Wow. Yes. So how come he's in Malaysia right now, right? Um, no, he's in, so, he's in, uh, India, isn't he? No. He was in Malaysia. No, if he's in India, he would have been arrested by now. He's not Right, in... right, he had to flee to Malaysia, right? Right. I think he's yeah. in Malaysia. Sopam is saying he's in Malaysia. Yeah. Um, but why is Malaysia not arresting this guy? Malaysia, you're supposed to be a moderate, non-terrorist, you know, supporting... Islamic Maybe people. money. Think of all the millions of dollars he's, uh... No, I he's think supposedly he just, acquiring right now. I think he just has such a big influence in the Islamic world, in the Sunni Islamic world, that M Malaysia being an Islamic country, if they arrest this guy, there will be people in the f streets, I think. I think Malaysia might be scared of the influence that this guy has. But yeah. Sub Subham is saying that his preachings are banned in India, Bangladesh, Canada, and Britain. Okay, can why Canada? I mean, I don't agree with banning anyone's speech, to be honest. That's weird. I mean, Britain, I expect, because Britain has lost their mind over freedom of expression. But even the worst of speech, I mean, I don't know, this is, is he directly inciting violence? Yeah. Mm, okay, I have to look into this. Like, what, do you know what the direct wording was? No. No? No, I don't know the direct wording. Like I said, I, I can't, I can't yeah. watch a lot. Um, <laughs> He's funny, though. His, his voice is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, go watch Video Wiz. He makes great impressions of this guy. Video oh. Wiz, yeah, he's so funny. Uh, Sopam is saying, yeah, he's in Malaysia. Sopam is also saying he is banned in India. Uh, Malaysia isn't giving him up to Indian authorities for some reason. Well, I think that's my 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 guess is Malaysia is not giving him to Indian authorities because, you know, there's a call out for my beheading in Malaysia, right? Uh, Malaysia, there are some really, so there are some, they have a Islamic extremist problem in Malaysia. And mm -hmm. I think that if the government there does decide to give he, this, give um, him up to Indian authorities, there might be some really, really angry people the government there has to deal with. So that's, that might be the reason why they're not giving him up. Uh, what's the... Top comment is saying chapter 7 verse 6 says he has got nothing to do with that. Oh, okay. Aww. No, people don't know what the... I, I don't know if people... <laughs> I don't know if people know what the, the joke here is because if people have to listen to Zakir Naik to know what it... Because every time, most of the time when he when he's talking, he always say chapter 7... I can't do access, okay? But just go listen to him. Like he's, <laughs> he just starts to say chapter 7... Verse six of the Quran says, like he memorized the whole Quran, and every time he just quotes the Quran. And but so yeah, if you want to read this joke properly, you have to say it in an accent. So I can't do that. I wish Valid was uh, from Vidu Viz was here. He would just go watch uh, Vidu Viz, his channel. Great impressions of him. You will understand this joke. Okay, I just ruined the joke by explaining it. Um, <laughs> So there's another top comment saying challenge admin if you if you listen to his lecture oh oh ho, ho, look this 
I, this is exactly what we said. That's one of the one of the comments on the post is a challenge to us, the admin, that if we listen to his lecture, we will too believe in a creator. This is yes. exactly this is exactly what we're saying. It's have it's right here. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this this <laughs> proves that what we were telling you guys. Uh, so what's uh, another top comment saying? Where did this money come from? Brother asked a very good question. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so sad because a lot of these jokes will only make sense if you actually listen to, to this guy. But, um, okay. Um, brother asked a good question. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, let me see what other comments do we have. John is John Brown is saying if he's advocating violence against non-Muslims, then yes, he should be banned. I don't know. Should his videos be banned like i don't know man I'm, I'm really worried i don't like when government says that this i think he should just get arrested for for preaching violence but i don't know if his videos should get banned that's like really uh authoritarian in my view i mean i don't want any kind of expression to be i want to be on the side of you know allowing all comments out there even maybe he just should get arrested for expressing violence, like for advocating violence. But I don't think the, the videos should get banned. I don't. I, may, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm open to changing my mind on that. But I always try to be so on the side of freedom of expression. Um, next news. Next news is out of Britain. A Christian. Okay, Christian persecution is at near genocide levels. According to a report ordered by Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt, the persecution of Christians in parts of the world is near genocide levels. The review, led by Bishop of Truro, the Right Reverend Philip Mountain Stephen, estimated that one in three people suffer from religious persecution. Christians were among the most persecuted religious group it found. Mr. Hunt said he felt that political correctness had played a part in the issue not being confronted. Um, he warned that religion is at risk of disappearing in some parts of the world, pointing to figures which claimed Christians in Palestine uh, Palestine represent less than 1.5% of the population, while in Iraq they had fallen from 1.5 million before 2003 to less than 120,000. The review is due to publish its final findings in the summer. Uh, uh, is this okay? Is this an actual real study or is this a Christian organization or something? Uh, well, um, this is an actual real study. So when genocide um, levels, really genocide levels, is that actually true? I mean, I know Christians have it bad in some countries like in Palestine or in Egypt or in Saudi Arabia or in Iran. But right. genocide level? Is that true? Uh, I, I do want I do want to point out that this um, while this was, you know, paid for this, the founding for this research was paid for by the foreign secretary jeremy hunt uh the person who led this was a bishop um that doesn't okay but just to be clear we're not saying that that's proof that this study is wrong no i mean i'm does, not saying that but it does I'm just have some saying red flag, yeah that the I, I point out bias if yeah. you know if there's a chance for bias it's what every you know researcher needs to understand um you know when whenever people do these research projects you have to keep in mind does this person who's performing this research right now do they have a point they want to prove um i mean so what are I, these genocides that they we like we're not hearing of like what genocide are they speaking of like it's it, it makes me like, are we reading this wrong? Because you go from saying that this is genocide level and then he talks about political correctness. Like, okay, yeah, we complain about political correctness as well, but we don't think that's genocide. Like, I It's don't... not genocide. I think that he's trying to call, um, you know, because, and, and I don't know how accurate it is that there were, you know, 1.5 million Christians in Iraq before 2003, um, but that they fall in, you know, I, are they assuming that they were killed off? Yeah, because they um, moved. You know, did they, you know, did they move? So is that really, yeah. are they, are they trying to call that genocide? No, people ran, people ran away. A lot of the, the numbers 
went down because a lot of them were like, well, ISIS is taking over. I'm a Christian. I'm out of here. Yeah, but what they're saying, the the interim report said the main impact of genocidal acts against Christians is Exodus, and that Christianity faced being wiped out from parts of the Middle Wait, East. Wait, are they talking about like, are they treating Christianity as a person, like as if it's a person when they say genocide? Like maybe they maybe they saying like, even if you're not killing people, the fact that Christianity is dying in these countries, that's a genocide. Like, are they like? It, just shifting between ideas and people as if it's the same thing? Right, and that, that's what I'm asking you. Like, huh. are they trying to actually say that there were 1.5 million people and now they're less than 120,000 because they were killed? Or are they trying to say that it's just Christianity that is dying off in these areas? Which, again, like you mentioned, it's not they're dying off. It's just no, these people are moving away. Yeah, I mean, that's all. It's not like this is not a problem problematic issue yeah okay christians having to run away it's a it's a problem that's a human human rights crisis but it's not genocide right it's not that's and if you read this article genocide is riddled all through here really yeah. i mean they are defining genocide the same way white supremacists define geno white genocide you know what i mean oh my god this video is gonna get flagged by youtube isn't it uh, but but you know how some white supremacists think like oh the white race we're getting mixed with other people and that's why genocide uh, like no it's not it's not genocide if nobody's that's killing not if, 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 if that's not genocide okay and I and I think this guy is just defining genocide the same way those other people define genocide but the weird thing to me is that this is a BBC article right and it's not the headline is not that. You know, somebody is claiming that Christians are the most prosecuted group. It's just, that's just the title. Christians are most prosecuted group. Like, as if BBC is confirming this. I mean, if this was, if this claims of genocide was coming from a white supremacist, saying the same, using the word genocide for how the white race was being treated, BBC, like, people would be like, this is white supremacist propaganda. But when Christians are saying this, I mean, I'm not, okay, again, I don't know if this study is true. Please, somebody tell us, but it just seems like bullshit to me right now. I'm happy to be corrected. I mean, look at the cover. The cover is a statue of Mother Mary being broken, right? Which shows anti-Christian sentiments in countries like Iraq, for example. But it's not a picture of some graveyard or something. Right. You know what I mean? Which right. would be what you get from a genocide. Again, we're not saying the way Christians are treated is okay. Okay, We're not saying it's hunky-dory and Christians are having... Yes, Christians are being prosecuted in these countries. And that's a problem. But it doesn't help your cause when you exaggerate and say it's a genocide. Again, we might be wrong. But if we are wrong, there's a whole bunch of genocide that has happened that we completely missed out on. Because... Like, what happened in Rwanda, for example, that was genocide, okay? And, you know, we know we know that happened. But if a whole bunch of stuff like Rwanda happened to Christians, and we missed it, then, like, I don't, I don't think we missed it. I think this guy is just exaggerating, and that's a shame that it's being... If, that, if he's exaggerating, it's such a shame that this is, is being passed as a scientific study... And not only that, BBC is publishing it with a headline that is as if it's confirming it. If all of this is sh bullshit, I'm, this is so sad. And it actually is sad for Christians because when you exaggerate a problem, it hurts fighting that problem. Daniel is saying you could call that ethnic cleansing. Call what ethnic cleansing? You're, are you talking about white people being mixed with other races? Uh, God, Godless Heathen is saying maybe they're talking about cultural genocide. Okay, if but but then call, but then if you call so don't use it if if that's what you mean don't use the word genocide. Okay, because genocide is a is a f phrase we use for some of the most horrific things that happens in 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 our history. And the power of that word needs to remain. Okay, we use it for... Genocide is the term we use. I'm, I'm not saying, by the way, Godless Heathen is agreeing with this. He's just saying maybe that's what they mean, okay? 
first of all, there's two there's two problems for that. If you're talking about cultural genocide, then the fact that you didn't mention cultural genocide and you just said genocide, that's already a huge red flag. But even if you just mean cultural, the death of a culture or, or an identity, don't use the word genocide next to that because we are going to lose the power of raising the alarm when actual genocide happens. Okay? It's the same problem when people just go around and call everybody that they don't like a racist. Because we used to be able to use the word racist against people that are actually racist and that would be, uh, that would be a powerful way of identifying a problem. Now it doesn't have that power anymore. So if now you're using the word genocide on things that are not genocide, it's going to be harder for us to point to actual fucking genocide. Uh, Sopam is saying this study seems awfully biased. It does seem like that, but we're, we, but we're open to be corrected if, if it's not. But if it's a true study, then holy shit, we messed out a whole bunch of genocides that we never got covered in the news. Uh, Jeremy is saying, well, since all religions were created by... Okay, this is too long of a comment, so I can't read that one. Um, ew, no. Isabel is saying, can they prosecute more anymore? More? Can they prosecute more, please? No, we're not in favor of prosecuting... Um, Christians. No, wait, am I reading it and uh, using the word right? Pro no, prosecute. Persecute. Persecute. Sorry, I keep using it. Okay. Yeah, persecute, not prosecute. Uh, Godless Heathen is saying, I agree with you, Armin. Oh, thank you. Uh, cult oh, John Brown was also saying cultural genocide, maybe. Yes, if that's, if that's what they mean, they're using it very irresponsibly. Um, yeah. Oh, and also John Brown is also pointing out that it could be, it could just be that they are not, uh, they are relocating or not admitting to be Christian. Exactly what we said. Okay, last news. Last news is out of Australia. Australians are accepting of migrants, but negative towards Islam poll finds. Australia is a country that accepts gay couples, hates the big banks, considers second generation migrants Australian, but the majority feel negatively towards Islam. New wide-ranging ranging data released by YouGov has revealed fascinating insights into the Australian identity, its place in the world, and many contradictions. 51% of Australians had unfavorable sentiments towards Islam, and only 10% looked, looked upon the religion positively, making Australia more negative than 17 of the other 22 countries surveyed. In fact, 37% of people said they were very unfavorable, um, the most negative response available, and this was far higher than the milder opinion of fairly favorable, which is 14%, and made it the single most common response to the religion. 23% of people were neutral. Here's the deal, though, guys. They're, this is a religion. They're not talking about Muslims here. They're not saying Australia is unfavorable towards Muslims. They're saying Australia is unfavorable towards Islam. And it's a belief system. So This is great, actually. This I is fantastic news. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know an entire country like Australia could understand the difference between hating an ideology versus hating a group of people. Like, they they have a negative, there's a huge negative view, view towards Islam, but they're cool with, immig with immigrants. Right. That's a very m a mature position. Um, I, like, wow, I'm very impressed with Australia. That's pretty amazing. To be able to, I mean, I thought that's uh, that's only people that follow like follow these discussions and like these podcasts. are like, oh yes, I I I'm against the ideology, but I don't hate the people. I thought there's a very small group of people that could make that differentiation. Well, now we have a huge country. Now we have an entire country that says like, yeah, we don't like Islam, but we like migrants. Wow. Yeah. I, that's a that's very impressive. That's that's a lot of progress. But I guess. Um, I don't know if this is because of the work of atheist activists in Australia, but if that's the case, good job on whoever is raising, talking. This is a level of maturity that I didn't think that would be, we would be reaching on such a scale in any place. That's pretty amazing. Um, I wonder what other people, Jonathan is saying that's awesome. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's see what the top comment is. This is pretty good. Uh, Eddie is saying Islam is toxic. Why should they? Exp 
I think you meant to say accept, but he said expect. But yep, um, I agree with that. Uh, another top comment is a little bit too long to read. Simon is saying is the same here in eastern part of Canada, Quebec. Um, Parvin is saying surprise, surprise. But this is very, very encouraging. I'm very, I'm, I am very. Oh, somebody is po posting an Aces Republic article. That's great. But great. So this shows that we're making that we're making progress. If we could do that more, I mean, I, to me, it seemed very challenging to uh, keep getting more and more people to. Uh, you know, find that Goldilocks zone, you know, to not be anti-people, but be anti-ideas. But if, an, if a country like Australia can manage that, then I think that we there's hope for other countries as well. And now we could keep pointing. Actually, now we could keep pointing. At, this is, you know what? Okay, I just thought of this. Because the beautiful thing about this is now we could keep pointing at this as proof that it's possible because a lot of a lot even a lot of people on our side that think this is the position that you need to have to be against the ideology but not against the people that believe it think it's impossible to convince people of that because they think that people see ideas as part of the identity and it's going to be impossible for us to convince more people to separate these from each other right but now every time so even people on our side that agree with us keep saying that that is it's a it's a lost cause to try to you know if people hate islam they will end up hating muslims right uh, or if people want to defend muslims they end up supporting islam it's just that's just how it's going to be but now because of australia we could just drop this article every time somebody says that that's impossible right we could just use this as like maybe it's not as, as impossible as you thought so thank you australia for uh, leading the way on that and showing us the level of maturity that we didn't think would be possible on such a scale um, John Brown is saying there was another article that shows Muslims are treated badly. Oh, okay. Well, that's not good Well, I mean Treated uh, Muslims are treated ba badly. You have to be careful with that because of course Muslims are treated badly uh, But is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Uh, is a house, you know, and are people are just looking at the total numbers or uh, are they adjusting it as per capita? Because uh, unfortunately, people there you will always find example of people treat, doing ho horrible things, right? But people try to use anecdotal ex um, examples to sometimes show that there's something is getting worse or something is getting better and the anecdotal evidence is sometimes is not is the worst the worst way to make that point and even right. when they show data they're not collecting the data like what they do is they look at total numbers rather than adjusting it per capita so be very careful with what you're looking at as a source and actually we need to be careful with what we're looking um like do you know if this is a religious study or not like we need to look into this and see if this is yeah, actually, yeah. It, is. it is what okay so ali did the research this. If it's wrong, blame Ali. <laughs> okay, but let's see. God, let's. See. I'm just joking. Now, Ali, Ali does a lot more research. Like the beautiful thing about having Ali here is she actually goes and checks the news a lot before she gets on uh, on the show. Unlike w uh, the rest of us, because this is because. <laughs> but I'm doing other things for Atheist Republic, so I don't get the time. But we need Ali to look into this. So it's really good to have you back. Um. Christy is sending us a heart. Um, I want to see what Godless Heathen said. It's getting better, but Australians are very racist. Okay, so Godless Heathen is confirming that Australians' racism is a big problem in Australia, but it's getting better. Uh, if Australia can learn to hate Islam without hating Muslims more and more, that would be, I mean, this study suggests maybe things are getting better, better in Australia. Jack is saying depends on what they mean by treated badly too. Are they lumping in Muslims being offended by anything anti-Islam, for example? Yes, exactly. I've seen a lot of studies um, that said like, oh, Muslims are being, people are being Islamophobes, which is a nonsense term. And um, more and more people are, um, there are more hate crimes against Islam, hate crimes against Muslims are rising. And then when you look at the study, what they included as hate crimes, they put like, they consider offend like people talking shit about Islam as hate crimes against Muslims. So be yeah. very careful about like for example, some places where have they have shown to be incredibly biased with their data collection 
is uh, the Southern uh, Poverty Law Center, S SPLC, and also, what's that other organization? A -A -D um, what else? What's that other organization? That part, um, I forgot the other name. Amnesty? A no, A A D something, I forgot. But they, they can be trusted as well. Um, let me see. S P. I think Google will tell me if I say S P. S P L C versus A. Oh, A D L. No, is that A D L? No, A D L or. Just want to make sure you guys don't trust this data. Yeah, A D L. Don't trust information from. A D L. Yeah, Anti-Defamation League. Yeah, both, they're, they're very biased, but the way, like there were some of their studies that they were showing that white supremacy is rising and it was ridiculous on how they were counting white supremacy. Like there were even, uh, there were even, <laughs> no, I'm not going to get into that, but but if you look at the examples of what, how they cherry picked the data to show that anti-supremacy was becoming a bigger problem, it was absolutely ridiculous. The way they collected it but these are very biased sources and i don't trust them um so i'm saying i try to spread uh, the term anti-muslim bigotry instead of islamophobia i guess that would be a better term yes exactly um islamophobia is a b bullshit term and every time somebody uses it please tell them to use the term anti-muslim bigotry instead of islamophobia uh, people that want to try to protect Islam are trying to keep spreading the word Islamophobia because they want to protect Islam as an idea by trying to mix it up with bigotry. Attacking Islam is not bigotry. Uh, don't if they want to identify something as bigotry, they should call they should use the word Muslim, not the word Islam. Anyways, I think that's uh, for today. Let me just see. Thank you, everybody. But the live chat today was so great because we had so many people clarifying, the, you know, Sopam, uh, John, Renzo, Beach, Christy, a lot of other people that you guys, we got information from across the world because people had more details to add and it just made the news a lot, a lot better. Jonathan, John Brown, everybody else, thank you so much for being here um and thank you for commenting thank you for correcting us thank you for disagreeing with us mars um w wayne uh is that how you pronounce it um yep um uh, beach saying thank you and yeah oh and muscal um well muscal will leave that for another discussion and happy but, mother's day to uh, all of you mothers and fur baby mothers and all yeah. all mothers oh happy mother's day to you ali thank you <laughs> All right, guys. See you again next week. Bye. Bye.